Hello, welcome to this video on Ansoft's matrix. So in this video, we're going to look at Ansoft's matrix and how it can be used to make strategic and tactical decisions. Before we start, you might be thinking, who that? Who is Ansoft? Well, his name is Igor Ansoff. Here he is on the right hand side. And he was a Russian American applied mathematician and business manager. Importantly, he is known as the father of strategic management. Woo. And he came up with uh, a matrix. And this is a marketing to do with expanding to markets and our products planning tool that helps managers to decide how to grow their business. And the matrix contains four alternative strategies. It can also be used to measure or assess the risk associated with each type of strategy. So here is our Ansoft's matrix. It's a matrix because it's a grid, a two by two grid. And we have categories at the top here. We have having uh, what we do with our existing products. We have another strategy here of developing new products. And on this side, we have two strategies, continue in our existing markets or enter new markets. It's where we sell our existing products in either greater numbers in existing markets. We call that market penetration. When we take our existing products and we try and sell them in new markets, we call that strategy market development. If we were to develop new products and try and sell them in markets we already sell products in, we call that product development. And if we were to try and sell new products in new markets, oh boy, we call that diversification. So let's go through them in turn and we'll start off with market penetrations. So obviously we need to take these details down in our notes. So market penetration is a strategy that a business might use to grow where they aim to sell existing products in existing markets. So effectively, the aim of this strategy is just to increase market share. So we sell more of our products to the same target customers. So we try and think of strategies here to get existing customers to buy more. Or maybe we widen the range of existing products. Examples might be when we look at budget supermarkets. Um, Aldi, for example, have grown rapidly in the UK. The stores are the same, so they've got a different range of stores. It's not like they're targeting different customers that are already selling in the UK. They've just tried to increase their market share. And so that would be a strategy there of market penetration, penetrating deeper into the market, getting more customers. Another example might be the way in which Domino's Pizza have used uh, e-commerce to encourage, encourage existing customers to buy more pizza. They haven't changed the market, they haven't changed the product, they just try to encourage more customers to so increase their market share. How might we evaluate this strategy? Well it's good in that businesses focus on markets and products they know well. They should know their customers quite well and what they want and also the competitors. It's unlikely to need much more market research, but will this allow the business really to grow? Is there scope for growth with this strategy or is the market perhaps already quite saturated or the competition quite strong? Our next strategy is product development. So this is a strategy where the business tries to grow by developing a new product and selling it in a market they already sell in, an existing market. Examples here um, on the left hand side, a common example is where a company tries to extend its brand. So for example, Coca-Cola might release uh, a new uh, product, Coca-Cola Life or Coca-Cola Green. And that is a new product, but designed already to target you know, existing uh, customers. On the right hand side, maybe a company like uh, Dyson might develop a new product and again, try and sell it to existing customers in an existing market. So these would be examples here of uh, product development strategies. How might we evaluate this strategy? Well, it's often uh, a good strategy if you're an established business because you have that core brand reputation that customers will want to buy your other new products. There's more of an emphasis here required on market research. Are they going to want this new flavor? Are they going to want this new bit of technology? And we have to be successful in terms of our development. 
It's a good way of exploiting our existing customer base. They're likely to, they're already our customers. We've already won them over. So maybe we can tap them onto our new products. In this instance, it's normally important to be the first company to, to adopt the strategy, the first company to make this innovation or release this uh, slightly different product. Now let's move on to market development. This is a strategy where a business tries to grow by trying to sell its existing products into new markets. So we're not trying to change the product, we're just maybe expanding into a new market. So this might be a new geographical market. So for example, exporting to emerging markets. It might be using a new distribution channel, a different type of market. If we go into a different market, we might also consider a different pricing policies alongside that. Here's another couple of examples of businesses who've tried this strategy. Starbucks, expansion into China, uh, market development strategy, it's the same product, same concept, but in a different market. Tesco, try to take uh, their supermarket model and uh, expand to the US, again, a new market, although this one didn't work very well and actually Tesco ended up pulling out of that market. It was a failed strategy. So how can we evaluate the this uh, strategy of market development? Well, it's a logical step to take if our existing markets are saturated or in decline. It can be more risky than product development, particularly expansion into international markets. It's maybe due to things like cultural differences. Um, or language barriers or not really understanding what it is that customers value or want in that new market. The final strategy is diversification. This is where the business tries to grow by selling new products that they've developed in new markets that they haven't been in before. So for example, um, Alphabet, the company that own Google on the left hand side here, they have a number of different uh, products that they've developed, um, glasses and the search engine, and Google Capital and Fiber and lots of different uh, products that they have developed and they sell these in a range of different markets. Samsung as well is another company that has many different uh, areas. So for example, life insurance and fire and marine insurance. They've also got their electronics business. Um, so very different unrelated services and products and they sell these into different countries. So how might we evaluate the strategy of diversification? Well, this is inherently risky. We've got no direct expertise of the product or customers in that particular market. We're unlikely to be able to achieve economies of scale because we're making a very different product, we're providing a very different service. However, if we are successful, we've actually reduced the overall risk of the business. It might be quite a risky strategy to, to implement it, but if it does stick and we get it in place, then the overall risk of the business might be spread because we're not just reliant on one particular product or one particular market. What steps might we take? Well, certainly innovation and research and development needs to be done to develop our new products. Uh, another approach is maybe to acquire, buy an existing business in the markets. We might buy uh, a company in that new market that already does the, the product for us. And then we can then extend that brand into the new market. So what we might have noticed here is there's also a relationship between risk. Now of these four, which would you say is the risk, the least risky approach? And which would you say is the most risky? Well, generally speaking, the risk increases as we move in these two directions. The least risky is market penetration. We already know the products and we already know the customers. As we move towards market development and we move towards product development, then the risk increases. The riskiest strategy of all is when we move completely down both uh, new products and new markets, and we uh, go for a strategy of diversification. So business can also look at their strategies that they're picking. Is this a strategy of market development? and consider the risk associated with that. Well, that's gonna be more risky than market penetration. So what will be the limitations to this idea that we can use Ansoft's matrix to 
evaluate or assess different strategies? Well, really it depends on the objectives of the business. We've assumed to an objective of growth, um, and it only really works if that's the case, if that's the main objective. We also need to consider the resources. You know, this might be a, a diversification might be a good strategy, but actually do we have the resources to enable it to be feasible? What's going on in the external environment? This can impact on uh, new markets or existing markets, so we need to maybe take that into consideration. Again, a lot of this is based on forecasts. If you enter a new market, you might look at forecast demand, but we can never be 100% certain about what the forecast is going to be. And also there might be a risk here of a manager. If I come up with an idea of diversification, I might favour it, even though when I look at the evaluation and consider the risk, maybe it's actually not really worth it. So overall, Ansel's matrix only tells part of the story as to which strategy we should go with or which is the best strategy. It must be used alongside other information and other decision-making tools. So in this video, we've looked at Ansel's matrix and how it can be used to make strategic and tactical decisions. That is it. Thank you very much for listening.